Good day, John. Hey, how are you? Can you hear me? I am. I am. Yes, very well. Thank you. Good. How are you? Oh, doing good. Sorry. I'm not, we're in our new office and I haven't quite figured out my cameras and things. So I'm using my laptop. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. So so what you've actually moved moved location? Yeah, so we are out of that downtown party zone. Oh, wow. And we are now um uh, Broad West, which is you know where Broadway kind of split as you were, after you left downtown. Yep. There was that big billboard. We're right there. All oh, right. Okay. Okay. Ah. Okay. Uh, and yeah. was it, is it is it more space or better space? Uh, yeah, or? Well, it's, I I think yeah, a little more space, but also um, better space. That other building was like I think a rehab project or something. So I mean, you know, it was. It, we, they'd been the, the firm had been in there for like over twenty years. Right. Okay. So this is kind of a an, uh, a refreshing, new, you know, more modern. Exciting day. stuff. Yeah. And and and, 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 and uh, do you have everybody back working in the offices now, or? Yeah. Still... Well, they asked everybody to come back June first. Uh, okay. But they just announced our remote work policy, so like I don't have to come at all if I don't want to okay. I, as a partner. Yeah. But uh, then staff can take like two days to work remote, and then um, the younger lawyers, it's based on their years of experience. Okay. Um, you know, so if they have you know zero to a few, they can only take like a day. Um, but as I, I said to somebody, I said, unless we're showing up, it really doesn't matter. Cause I no. mean, I mean, the whole idea is the training and, you know, for the younger people. So yeah, hopefully, yeah exactly. Um, uh, yeah. So, I mean, I, I told the, the associate that I work with, I said, look, you know, I know you got to come four days a week. I'll come at least three. And then uh, that way we can, you know, be together and, cool. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's good. How's everything over there? Yeah. Starting to creep creep back to normal i think yeah good <laughs> um yeah so so uh, the the i mean the the good news is that the the vaccinations are rolling on really really well um so we're we're now up to like 70 percent first vaccination and 50 percent second oh, that's um, good. W which is way ahead of everybody else in europe so um yeah so so i've had the two shots all good um and, and we were we were expecting all the final restrictions to be lifted um, on Monday, um, but that's going to be pushed back now another month because of the uh, the, the, the sudden rise of the the Indian variant. Um, yeah. So uh, so yeah, we're, we're quite strange situation in that we're, we're now back at top of the charts in terms of European infections, um, but mm. but we but we we're, we're very well well placed for. Uh, vaccination so what we're seeing is we think we've now broken the link between actually getting the virus and going to hospital with it so um, thousands of people have got the virus at the moment very very few are going into hospital and, and oh, that's good. hardly any are getting serious seriously ill so um, and then as of today or tomorrow I think over 18s can get the jab so um, that's uh, they've, they've gone through the millennials quite quickly which is where they need to get to really but yeah so oh, it's, yeah yeah we were able to get I got I'm down to my um, all the way down to my 14 year old okay have all been vaccinated the only yeah. one left now is my 10 year old yeah. yeah but you have to wait till they get the dosing and all yeah. that stuff right whereas yeah. the other is the same yeah yeah yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. They haven't made a decision yet on on the under 18s um, just yet, but uh, that, 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 that that's going to be the next priority, obviously. Because yeah, well, we're looking for it. We want to come. I mean, <laughs> oh, I know, I know. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, it was interesting. You know, there's quite a few business events that are being planned from September onwards. So. Um, um, you know, uh, uh, the, the, you know, we, we, we've got different people saying we can't wait to come over. We've got people over here that can't wait to go across. Um, and I've just got this idea that for the for the first two months of normality, everybody's going to be like, <laughs> no, <don't laughs> oh, get right. over there, what are you doing yeah, here? Right. <laughs> well, you know, I, I confirmed uh, at the airport that BA, uh, their direct flights returning July 12th. Oh, is it July 12th? Brilliant. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you if you go on now, I mean that's obviously as as yeah. they even said based on government, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. you know regulations. And then I talked to we had our big U.S. side um, uh, meetings with the you know the ambassador yeah, yeah. and all the consul generals and the staff. And they were saying the same thing, but of course it depends on, yeah. um, you know, the U.S. I think the U.S. had, you know, we still have a travel ban, and then I think where Amber, 
on the UK mm-hmm. side. And mm-hmm. so we were all hopeful that the G7 would kind of, they'd reach some kind of agreement mm-hmm. there. And yeah. hopefully, I think um, that, yeah. right now though, you can buy a direct flight from Nashville to London on the 12th, a okay. fleeting July 12th. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. That's uh, good. Uh, but, um, but but you'd have to quarantine when you got here, obviously. So, right, right, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Uh, and, and 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 I was hopeful that by the G seven we would have actually seen that, but uh, um, um, just just the rise in the in the Delta variant right. mean, means that they're just going to hold off for a few more weeks. Yeah, and I know um, they've been negotiating really hard, uh, you know, on this. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. hopefully we'll be able to. Um, yeah you know, be able to get these groups. And then uh, Lori and I have been talk- talking with others about putting together a program that would, and we'll bring you in on it. I, I, I've mentioned it to Masami too, um, where we'll have a cohort of companies and a cohort of U.S. companies. And and at, I don't know, if it, not at the same time, but in the course of this whole thing, move them across um, sure. to say, um uh, because I think the time is right. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, everyone seems to really want to focus on the UK. So let's, let's, yeah. let's see what we can put together. And then we're going to make the presentation to my consul general and get them to approve it so that we get the DIT folk and we get some maybe other government resources allocated to it. Because I think then that will also lend some credibility on the UK side sure. uh, as, as well. And also to the, U- the US side to know that there's that support. Absolutely, um, yeah. yeah. Over there, so so I'll I'll, I'll let you okay, know. Cool. Yeah, yeah, just show, yeah, no problem. Yeah, because I think it's a good thing. You know, it's a it's it's. I want to get everybody involved because I, yeah. I I think it can be a real. It can be the beginning of what yeah. I hope would be recurring. Um, you know, I'll call it business development mm-hmm. uh, type trips, either for trade or investment or both. Sure, absolutely. No, no, hey, Lisa, no. how are you? Hi, Lisa. Hey guys. New technology again. Heard you had a little struggle getting in, John. <laughs> I just learned well, I just, how to use my personal computer and, you know, through the bank funds out inspires me, so be it. <laughs> right. Well, you know, it's funny. I, um, I just got my uh, link to even join at like 9.05 or something. So okay. I've just been sitting here like, well, I thought I was going to get some link or something. but Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I, 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 I came in in about half an hour or an hour ago just just to test it was working um and as soon as i came in somebody was all somebody came into the room and started asking me about nashville i went well okay <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was fine that was good that was good well, was, you know, no I preparation able, adam i did the same thing you know I, I pulled it up i had a call a client call at nine that i didn't think was going to take long and it didn't and so I, I told Lori, i'm like i'll be there and then by the time i popped back over to the main stage session i got to hear you know, part of Lori's piece. And then I was like, oh, well, let's go pop over here and see what's going on. So uh, I'm, I'm getting uh, there. Uh, and, and, and I think if, if you if you click the, the, the thing on the right that says people, you can see who who comes into the room and stuff. Um, so, so so at the moment, you know, it, um, it's just as I'm, I'm not sure whether everybody has to have their video on or not if they come in, but we'll we'll see. Well, it took me a minute to realize I needed to click that share and audio yeah, or video yeah. and audio. <laughs> Sitting here going, I don't see myself. And that's not a bad thing, but I don't <laughs> think they're seeing me. <laughs> uh, well, I'll tell you, uh, I'm pleased Nashville's got a nice head of steam going. This Oracle announcement's just phenomenal, uh, I think. Uh, and I, I live, as you can tell, I'm still work from home, but we are right across the river from where that campus is going. So, you know, I I agree with you because I mentioned it during our big meeting that we have with the ambassador and all, and it really got everyone's attention um, because I mean, that is a fairly, and you you think about all the announcements you can kind of put together all focused around tech. And then I thought we had a pretty successful uh, FinTech trade mission with one, you know, London, um, and I think all that together is saying, you know, there's really something happening here and I, I want to be a part of it. I don't want, you know, I want to be on the front of that wave. I don't want the wave to crash over me or, or just totally miss it. Um, sure. And so I, I've seen more interest um, lately, you know, as a result of, I think, a combination of that and even around like other technology, green technology, the, the EV battery stuff and, and, and logistics tech and all these things that are happening. Yeah, I, I think we are definitely poised. Hey, guys. Hey, Laurie. Okay, I now know who my friends are. 
Hey. You've always known who your friends were. <laughs> I'm going to take a picture of this, and when I feel like nobody cares, I'm going to take it. Like, hey. uh, Ma'am, I have this question about Nashville, if you could. Um. <laughs> I, I'm so glad. Well, guys, I think I don't know whether we should expect anybody or not. I, I hope the presentation went okay. It, um, yeah, Adam uh, had somebody. Yeah, yeah, Adam yeah, yeah. So, 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 I didn't want to listen to the Charlotte presentation. So I came in, I came in to the room to make sure that the tech was working, and there was somebody came straight in and started asking me about Nashville. So I was like, awesome. Oh. Awesome. <laughs> so, success. So, so that was it. So I had five minutes talking to this uh, IT outsourcing guy um, about all the exciting stuff that was going on. It was like, oh, OK. Um, so, so so that was good. And, and then I switched back and, and, and saw your great presentation. So all good. Well, uh, great is uh, I appreciate your, your comments. Thank you. Uh, you know, it's funny how rusty I have become not doing this all the time and you know and in person where you can read people's body language and kind of go with it it's a lot harder on zoom and i've not been doing a whole lot of them uh so i'm i'm ready to get back and do these in person yeah great job. job well thank yeah, I thought you it was, I thought it was really good i mean it, it i don't know really how good. if you're one of these other cities and then you have to listen to all the stuff we have going on you must just feel like you know, like the price is right music in the background when you lose <laughs> you know like wah 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 kind of <laughs> I do think it's funny how every time I lo I love listening to other cities yeah. because we all say the exact same thing. <laughs> like that's what I try to figure out. And like, I do get some good ideas when I like see hers about, and I struggle with this with a group that really doesn't know, like what you tell a prospect who has been researching your city versus what you say to somebody that you're introducing your city to is different. And I, I need to rework my presentation for, I need to have two. I need to have more of that introduction, mm -hmm. real high level that talks about the companies that are already here, the big announcements that starts off like that and then gets into the detail. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You're so right. You know, and I think I've always thought you do a fantastic job. You're a great speaker and a great presenter. You always have your act together. And John knows this. Adam, I don't know if you've had the pleasure. Lori scripts me big time. If I need to say something, she tells me what to say, when to say it, who to say it to. And it's fantastic because you don't want me going too far off script. <laughs> but you know, I think you do an excellent job, but I think you make such a fantastic point. And we see the same thing um, in what we do every day. You have to know your audience and you have to direct it in the right way. And, you know, is this a 60,000 footer or we got to really dig in on something specific? And and I think that's a differentiator and being really good at what you do and, and being able to be thoughtful about that audience. So, and today was like, sometimes you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you just yeah. Feel like, no. No. And, 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 and it's something that we always struggle with as well. So, so you know, when you don't know the audience, we're having to sort of come in and say, "This is America. This is this is our region. This," is, and literally come down, you know, piece by piece before you then start talking about the specifics of the state and, and, and the different cities. Um, but I think that that rather than expect them to take in loads and loads of information, all you're looking to do is spark that interest, and and most importantly for them to go ah, a really friendly switched on person that I can then go and talk to. So, you know, that, that's all you're trying to do really, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, I think to me that was the win. And, you know, if, if I can get anybody who is somewhat interested, and I've already had a few people reach out through law, uh, LinkedIn. So, you know, I'll circle back with them and provide some information. And, you know, I think naturally the way these are placed into the schedule of the program it's getting late in the day people have been doing this on that side all day and have an awards an event awards event after um, a little later this evening so you know like i said i don't know if we'll wind up with a lot of folks but we'll give it 15 20 minutes and also guys if you guys need to drop off don't feel like you need to stay <clears throat> That's good, uh, and, and 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 there's nothing worse than being the only person in the room as well. So, Lori, <laughs> <laughs> dead center in the middle. Oh, no, there are days it's okay. <laughs> Me, myself, and I in my head. That's not a good place. <laughs> yes. Well, I noticed we are recording. 
Uh, so this will live. Uh -oh. <laughs> That's fine. The organizers have been fantastic. Everything's yeah. really good. Good. Yes, they have been. It's really an interesting platform. I like the way that they do it. So the, the, um, the hop in as a, as a, as a uh, product is one I've used a few times, and and, and it's very good. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's actually um, headquartered here in Manchester. Oh, um, wow. so, oh yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's 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 a really good little company. You know, Adam, this is completely off work subject, but mine and Jason's nephew is marrying a girl from Manchester. Wow. And they're going to get married later this, I mean, he's English, he lives in England, and he's going to get married uh, later this summer. We're not going to make it to the wedding, which uh -huh. I hate because I love Manchester. Did, and so I you want me to go wedding. instead? Yes, please go. <laughs> well, y'all, it's kind of funny. Oh, wow. The stories that I'm hearing about his uh father-in-law are quite interesting so uh you know i think he would charge back to the family anybody who came <laughs> excellent, excellent. We'll, talk, we'll talk offline about, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, about his um we've been laughing we're like what is he is he making money off of it like is he it's like he's selling the tickets for 150 and then you know he's getting a kickback somewhere it's been a very wow. interesting way to operate but Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I'm, I'm hoping from a father-in-law uh, standpoint that he is uh, easier to deal with. Yeah. <laughs> but how's uh, the weather in Manchester? It, 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 we've had like two or three weeks of really hot sun, um, un, unusually. Um, but it, it's now pretty overcast, but very, very dry and warm. So it's proper summer stuff. Yeah. Um, and I, I was just saying to John, we're in this sort of strange situation where even though we're in the third wave of infections and, and we're now back top of Europe uh, in terms of, of new cases, we're also top of Europe in terms of vaccinations. Yeah. Um, mm. So we, we've broken that link between catching COVID and actually ending up in hospital. So um, yeah, we're, we're, we're um, quite a way ahead of everybody else over here. So that's really, really good. Um, and and we're, we're quite close to everything opening up now. Um, good. Just, just last week, I had my first sort of experience of post-COVID life. Um, where, um, I, I went to a, a government-controlled test event. Um, so um, it was the cricket. England were playing New Zealand in cricket. Um, and, we, and we had 19,000 people in a stadium. It was capacity stadium, so there's no, no distancing. But you, you had to show a test before you went in. You had to do a test afterwards. But once you're in there, it was just like a whole day of, of, of like being – back in two years ago it was quite surreal but okay uh, adam the next the next time we see each other whether it's there or here i'm buying you beverages and you're going to explain the rules of cricket to me i, I knew you'd say that watching on tv i even had my ipad open with the rules and i still couldn't understand <laughs> what was going on and then one of the one of our neighbors is from india and so he has taught all the boys not Brilliant. necessarily how to play cricket but they but they bat and yeah. they play a, a some game they've made up in the neighborhood, but I, I really would love to know the rules. So well, you have to explain it to me. You'll you'll probably be like the three hundredth American I've had to do that to. So <laughs> it, 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 it would be a pleasure. Okay, well, good, good. Then I'll buy yeah. the beverages. So. Good, good, good. good. <laughs> and, and because I'm a nerdish supporter of all American sport, I know what you words to use so that it doesn't sound like. Okay, a so it makes language. sense. Okay, <laughs> yeah. great. I, I I would appreciate that because yeah. I've tried. I, I oh, just good. was totally lost. Good. Totally right. <laughs> um, well, uh, well, while we're all on, um, one of the questions that uh, uh, the guy that was on before um, actually asked me, because I, I was talking about the tech scene and, and, and I'd mentioned Amazon and Oracle, um, and, and, and quite an interesting question. I'm sure I, I'm sure you, you, you'd, you'll get it quite a lot. Was um, you know, if if Amazon are taking five thousand and Oracle are going to hire eight thousand, you know. What, what if I just want to come in and hire 15 or 20? Is there room for a small company coming into the tech scene? So, Yeah, I, I, I definitely think yes. Um, you know, we're seeing movement, continued movement, even post-COVID, I think we're going to see more. So, you know, influx of population, people moving from all over the country to Nashville. And when you hear those big numbers about Amazon and Oracle, you've got to keep in mind, like, those are often 10 years and 20 yeah. years. So, you know, we announce, you know, like the Amazon announcement, for example, I mean, that's, or actually it's Oracle. It's like 825 jobs when you really build, break it down over what yeah. they're going to do over a year. You know, we add 
25,000, 30,000 jobs a year naturally to this economy. So it's not, while they're big and they're impactful, they're not debilitating from a talent perspective. So, you know, that that's my my thought there. Now, and, and don't we have, but don't we also have like that Nashville, is it like the Nashville, I, is it, I call it it, but IT, you know, that program and, and yeah. that they are really working to develop uh, also from a homegrown or organic perspective, more IT talent. And they've got different programs, some that are obviously looking to recruit, not, not recruit, but incentivize people to move, as Lori said. And then also, I think, within the, the high schools and colleges and, and what have And even, uh, like, I'm in another career, so this would be my second career, third career kind of thing, training programs and things like that to generate more uh, of a workforce to pull from. And I think, right? Is that is that still yeah. going on? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah that is. Yeah. And Lori, I'd say another important thing to think about, it'd be interesting to get the statistics as well. When you think about an Amazon or an Oracle, those aren't 8,500 tech jobs. There's support groups and there's normal people that have to work there. There's finance teams. There's all of those <laughs> subsectors <laughs> within the people. And, uh, you know, just another observation. So uh, one of my neighbors here in Germantown, um, fascinating young couple, he's probably mid 30s. He went to, he's homegrown, grew up in, you know, like White House, Tennessee, has his degree from Vanderbilt in math and computer science. And he's like 35 and he is a co-founder of a tech company and they do everything from software design for HCA to, you know, a whole spectrum of things. And the more, you know, I got to know him, there is just like this underground of tech people here that have been here all along. And you're exactly right. I think you look, go back to the university pitch. You're, you're just, you're growing them in there and how many will stay here and then others coming in. And, you know, maybe that's the thing as we look at workforce, it, it seems, unless there's some group I don't know about that is proactively on behalf of the city or the state recruiting these college grads, they're just coming. They love the lifestyle here. And I continue to be just, remember when, when we first met Lori and John, probably, you know, I used to have a game I would play as I was out networking four days a week, probably. Every week I'd choose who's the newest person to Nashville that I just met. And some people were like, I just, you know, the moving van came on Saturday and we're a great example. Um, and we're doing a lot of internal mobilities big at Bank of America. We want to hire from within to give people career development opportunities or if they want to go somewhere else, you know, and not lose them from the company. And so we've probably got. There's two managers at least two very senior relationship manager roles. Um, and they'll like, I'll sit on my floor when we go back to the office. They've all moved here this year. And some of them have young families. I mean, these are, these are really talented people that we're bringing. And you multiply that across the other companies. Um, there's a real interesting influx with that. And Lori, I turned them onto the chamber. I'm like, all right, people, you want to get, you want to get engaged. There's your spot. And, uh, and I told them about the intro Nashville. I flipped that over to him. I said, you've totally got to check this out and make sure you get on the mailing list for the events. Because I just think about, I still am missing stuff, but how much I pick up between chamber and rotary is another unbelievable Group yeah. the present the presenters are unreal. We had Butch Spirit and spoke Monday. You don't get any better than Butch mm -hmm. to really get the take on what's going on on that hospitality tourism side. We had the guy that are doing the Grand Prix here, and that's exciting. Or you know, it's not Grand Prix; it's a it's Grand Prix. It is Grand Prix. Anyway, so I just think there's a lot of cool stuff. I think our mojo is coming back so fast, and I think the job growth is there. I loved the chart you showed and in, in the in migration. Yeah, uh, you know, big surprise there. It's killing the housing market. I feel so much for young families trying to find a, a home. Yeah, and they're yeah. just getting them swiped out from under them. But that's the thing. I do worry a little bit about inflation, wage pressure, workforce is a little tight. Yeah, um, yeah. but it's a good problem to have. I think. It was interesting that was on the, on the yesterday that was talking about 
just the pressure on housing across the U.S. It was a national story and just saying that, you know, we had not built affordable housing in any market during the time that it needed to. So that started off behind and, you know, it's becoming a bigger challenge now. But I think that's that's every market. Yeah, no, I would agree. And then the, the supply chain disruption is insane. Uh, Lori, I think, knows this. We're building a house up in Smithville on Center Hill. And uh, we were I, I didn't think I was lucky at the time for what we paid for the lumber package, but it's gone up 30 percent. It's settling down a bit. But the shortage of things, I cannot get an oven until probably August or October. It's just you know, they yeah. can't find the, the plug inserts, the wire provider they use, the builders up there, they just got notification that their supplier saying the producer, their vendor is going to shut down for a month. And it's like, you know, raw material issues. It's just the strangest yeah. thing I have seen in my 36 years. Well, I mean, you, you got to think about it. So last year there was low demand and so no one stocked anything. And then now you didn't have, you know, if it had just come back normally, you know, you'd probably have a little here, a little there, but it came back exponentially more. I just did a big, I was interviewed yesterday about this and, and we were talking about it, that, that it was this, this, this demand was so huge and it was coming from everywhere. And so there's just no way to, there was no way for anyone really to, um, to have this stuff in stock or be able to produce enough of it. And so now, and then what's happened now, you've got all these shortages. And so if they would just kind of maybe, if you could focus it a little bit, at least some people could produce, but now they've spread these shortages out or the cost so much that now nobody can really do. And so it's going to take everything I've seen at least through the third quarter or into the third quarter before it starts to moderate again. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I represent a GE appliance or through the Chinese parent and I, my stove broke and my fr freezer broke, couldn't find one anywhere. I call, I called those people and said, can you help me out? And they're like, man, we don't have anything. I mean, nothing. They said there was, they had such a great year and they're having a great, you know, they're, they're just printing money over there. Uh, but yeah, they, they can't keep up. I mean, just cannot, um, you know, keep up. But it was, well, uh, yeah. you, have, you have the microchip uh, shortage and that's just, mm -hmm. it's just, it's the irony is just sad. Auto demand than you've seen in ages. There's such pent up. Consumers are flush with money. They're ready to spend and watch used car prices go through the roof. It's just crazy dynamic. And yes. And after the shutdown, everybody's ready to go gung ho. And all of a sudden, there's that constraint. And that microchip thing is so pervasive. You just start to think about, you know, what they use. For instance, if you liked that Ford F-150 that had that automatic seat adjuster that was so cool, well, you may not get that if you really want to get your truck in the next year. You know? Well, you know, the I think you're going to see that moderate a little faster because all the, you know, a lot of the driver of that was the increase in what I'll call home electronics, you know, we'll work from home kind of stuff. And of course, now we're all going back to work. And so that hopefully should see some of that, that demand will decrease and they anticipate then, again, we'll, we're going to experience some shortages for a, a, a period of time, but that that should begin to, to kind of get better. And then, of course, a lot of our own trade policies have now incentivized other countries to develop their own. So that, you know, I think you'll start seeing some of that maybe come online, um, you know, as well. So hopefully, yeah, hopefully it'll get it'll get better. I just found out while we were talking, my first child, Pat, got his driver's license. So, yes, I will be in the, uh, yeah, I know, I've got another one in a couple of weeks. So my insurance bills are about to like, I don't know quadruple and i have to buy a car a used car so i'm i'm one of those people looking out for a used car <laughs> get a beater a really old beater yeah that way yeah. you know it, yeah. it keeps them humble and if they wreck it it's not so painful <laughs> right 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 i'm just like uh you know, i'm not ready for this they were just four yesterday you know what i mean it's like what happened <laughs> I'm still trying to pawn off a few on Lori, but she won't take them. No, don't need one. Uh, I'll, I'll just appreciate your stories about them, John. <laughs> <laughs> but we should experience this firsthand, I'm telling you. Well, I'll tell you, it's worth the effort because mine are 25 and 28, and we are having the time of our lives with them right now. And they like to be around us and vice versa. 
we've got our annual pig roast, Lori, coming up. We had to move it back a week. So we're not doing it Jamboree weekend up there, but uh, so it's next weekend and the kids are killing me. They're like, Will goes, okay, mom, I want to invite this, this, this is, and these are not people that are coming to have dinner. They are coming Friday and going home on Sunday. And so he's got like 10. And then my daughter, you know, has got several coming and we've got all our friends coming and my house is not finished. So we're like, bring a tent or bring an air mattress. I can put you in an air conditioned house. There's just no bathrooms. Is the Jamboree going to be in person this year? Or is it going to yeah. be virtual again? Yeah. So Adam, in my hometown, which Lisa has connections to, it's a, it's on a, a TBA made uh, lake that is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it's I'm awesome. out in 15 minutes out of Nashville, and it's where I grew up and where my whole family is. There is um, a big festival for the 4th of July weekend, and they shut off the little town square, and they have craft vendors, and they have a stage, and it's an amateur music competition. So they do you know, fiddle, banjo, I mean, every type of kind you of Americana yeah. instrument, clogging, clogging. I, dancing, yeah. uh, <laughs> wow. you know, uh, kind of like Irish step dancing. So uh, they, they have all of this stuff going on and it's, um, it's a big deal. This is the 50th anniversary. Last year was the first year that they've not had one in 50 years. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's when my whole family comes back. It's kind of when everybody comes back that went to school there and, walks around and gets a funnel cake and listens to some music and it's fun. That's a I, I watched the whole virtual event funnel last year. <laughs> like a big, you know, where they, yeah. have you, do you not, do they have funnel cakes in England? Not, um, not by that name. Big anyway. fried dough, big it's, thing it's of fried, fried dough, dough, powdered sugar. Okay. Okay. Kind of like a donut with extra okay. grease. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sounds fun. Right. Funnel cake. Yeah. Okay. Yes. It's delicious. <laughs> If they do, what are they going to do with this recording? It's like they are totally <laughs> from Tennessee. Well, I, I noticed Tom has put up, if you are not on the screen, click share audio and video. And so I see like eyes. I see like there's more people, but I don't see anybody. So I see four of nine. Me too. And that's what, I don't know if nine is the total that can come in. I think it is. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. The round okay. table rooms are usually 10. So, um, and, and, and I think one of the organizers keeps popping in and out as well. Yeah. So. I'll okay. make the people that's up and I'll see somebody, you know, come in and out. But, okay. Yeah. That's probably the fifth. And we, so in the U S I've not used hop in, I've used lunchio and like, or it's like lunch pool. And there's another platform that's very similar, um, but not, not this one. Mm. Right. And guys, they did say that if nobody popped in, we, we could go ahead and close down early. So um, let's give it to five minutes after. And then I've, I've got information online, Yeah. Uh, but I was going to tell, tell you guys would all be interested in this. I was just at a site selection guild annual meeting. So all the site selectors coming together and we were in Orlando. So a couple of things there, Adam, Orlando is back to normal. You know, we went to Epcot, my husband and I stayed an extra day. We're so, um, we're so ready to travel to other countries and other worlds. Epcot was the best we could do. <laughs> so, uh, That's a great we one. Around Epcot. And, you know, I think as of Tuesday, they were taking away their mask requirement. So, I mean, it's more or less back to normal in Disney. Um, but all of the site selection consultants, I mean, we all talked about how busy we were. And they're saying that, you know, there's just, like Lisa said, pinup demand. Uh, just cash that companies have that, that they had not spent, you know, projects that they didn't do that they need to do. Um, and they were saying their kind of predictions for, for our economy were that we'd see this kind of growth. Most of them said at least 18 months. Now there was one site selector and I think this is more applicable for us. He was like, I think you're going to see it 24 months kind of right as you get up into really the next U S presidential election. Mm -hmm. He said, I think you're going to just see, continue to see just tremendous growth. And guys, I mean, we're busy and we're busy with everything. 
everything. I mean, we're busy with small office all the way to huge office to, you know, small manufacturing to 2000 plus manufacturing. I mean, it is all across the board and in every industry that you could think of. So it's a good, good thing. But uh, I mean, we are just, we've come out of COVID busier than we were before. Yeah. Well, Lori, I'm curious, you know, um, first of all, I was one of my dear friends who's the queen of networking as I am her co-queen. She said, you and Bank of America were so visibly absent at the Chamber Partnership 2020 event. 300 people showed up, all the business leaders, the mayors there. And I'm like, you've got to let me out. I can't take this anymore. But yeah. uh, I think you're starting definitely to see that big reopening and um, so we're kind of eager to see where it goes. But I was curious because I know during COVID, you guys had to let people go. And are you starting to get to a point where you can bring staffing back? And, yeah. you know, yeah. what's that look like? Yeah, we are. We are and that's great. right now our economic development team, we're down to three of us that are right now just through some natural transition some jobs that you know did not get filled as COVID started. And then uh, Malia on our team is moving into a revenue role. So we're actively looking to kind of backfill and rehire um, you know, the, the positions where Jeff moved up. So that's a position we're looking to rehire. Uh, we need another project manager. So, I mean, we are, I think, feeling pretty good about future revenue and those positions are going to be restored probably by in reality by the end of this fiscal year so this coming fiscal year so we are like actively looking now i think you'll see about in the next probably three months two of those get refilled and then the third one get refilled towards the end of you know kind of this time next year um because there's also that that piece of you got to bring people in, but you have to be able to train them. So we're trying to figure out that balance of how do you how do you we either need to bring in experienced talent or we need to bring in people and have the capacity to make sure that they're they're getting trained properly. But you know we're we're just starting to see that. I think it's it's interesting too. I heard somebody say the other day what like fifty percent of people are looking at new opportunities. So there. Yeah. You know, I don't know about Bank of America and, and, and Baker, but I think we'll see some other movement as well as people are just, you know, ready for change coming out. So um, I think it's going to be busy. We're going to hold on tight for the next six, eight months. <laughs> yeah, I think it's going to be challenging though, to find people. Um, it's the strangest thing. I mean, four million people have left the labor market right. and, and the boomers are finally punching the ticket, the retirements. We've had a number of high level folks retire, um, you know, well, across the board. And we've got a lot of, you know, I've been there 36 years. We've got folks that have been there 40 plus years and they're ready and it's time and it's appropriate. But, um, you know, with them goes incredible talent and experience and, you know, bringing people on. And, you know, we see it across the, the industries. And I, somebody was telling me the other day, Dairy Queen is paying $20 an hour to get workers. And you're seeing, you're feeling it in certain, I mean, you know, weird hours and try to try to call customer service at Costco, for instance, on hold for an hour and 45 minutes with no alternative. And so technology is going to have to pick up the pace and, and pick up where there's just insufficient workers to do a lot of these you know, yeah, task oriented yeah. jobs. Well, it's jobs in general, but especially that's because I know my manufacturers are all just the inflation's coming. I mean, it's here, and I think we're going to see more of it. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see kind of what falls out. And and you know, I was reading something the other day too that said sixty two percent of people surveyed. Now I can't give you all the details of the survey said that they would turn down a $30,000 raise to be able to work from home. I mean, that's also going to tell you kind of who's going to be the winners and losers in recruitment and retention of employees. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that's going to be, I think, you know, uh, just a, a, a bit, I don't even want to call it a benefit, but that's just going to be what people expect now as they're interviewing and looking for a job and it's going to be a huge differentiator. 
Yeah, no, I think you're right. And I, I see it in my son and their generation. They're, that's like, that's one of their first questions in interviews. Adam, I'm curious, what are you seeing in the UK? What's the labor market there? Yeah, it's quite interesting because I, um, I think that talking to people over in Nashville, talking to colleagues around the world, um, we're all going to come out of this not only at different times, but in different ways. Um, and certainly in the UK, I would say we're very much at the um, top end of, of, of places that it's been a genuine shift in, 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 in patterns. Culture, work, um, you know, a lot of things aren't going to go back to normal. Um, so you know, I think that we have a, a few dynamics here where um, um, London – for example, has, has always been this magnet that sucked in anything from within two or three hours away. Um, so the idea of working in a, in, in, a, in a city is still valid, but spending two hours to get to that city, which was fairly normal in the UK, that's gone. Nobody's going to sit on a train for two hours to get to you know middle of London to then sit in a glass box for six or seven hours and then another two hours on the train. It, even saying it now, it sounds like a crazy situation. Now, you all work in a big, busy city, and then you drive home in 15 minutes, you're at home or whatever. Um, so we don't have any of that. So I think that's that's a big advantage for some of the smaller, medium-sized cities. Um, but but also for the, for the companies that are expanding, um, rather than look at workforce demographics in one particular city or region, because the UK is a relatively small place and you can travel from you know top to bottom in four or five hours, mm -hmm. if you're only asking your workforce to come in once or twice every couple of weeks, then your your your, your talent pool is then the whole country. Mm -hmm. um, similar in, in, in Ireland, there was a, a, an American software company um, announced um, a few months ago um, 200 jobs in, in Ireland. Um, and, 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 th and they said, you know, had this been pre-COVID, we'd have been announcing 200 jobs in Dublin. We're now announcing 200 jobs in Ireland and we're expecting 20 in Cork, 20 in Wicklow, 20 in Limerick. So those sorts of things are, are, are very fluid and interesting. Um, but then also talking to colleagues in, say, Germany and, you know, there is very much a we need to go back to exactly what we were doing before. Um, so, so you know, again, you've got the different you know, national stereotypes and, 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 and different ways. Um, we're, you know, Brits are, are notoriously a little bit more independent, perhaps, and, and um, we quite like working from home and, and, and you know, going to the pub at five o'clock and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, um, I think that there's also a big difference between manufacturing and, 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 and the rest of the country. So manufacturing has carried on pretty much, you know, relentless throughout. Um, and, and so I've got some friends that, you know, work in factories or, or run factories and, and they've been, you know, going about their normal day ever since my friends that work in, in offices haven't been you know, for 15 months. Um, and I actually accepted a, a, an invitation yesterday, which is I just went, yeah, yeah, of course I will. They wanted me to moderate a, a, a workshop um, uh, and, and, and it was in the south of, uh, of England. And, 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 and I instinctively presumed it would be on Zoom or, or Teams. <laughs> and then I realized, oh, it's actually in person. So that's my first in-person meeting. I've not even had one face-to-face -face meeting in 15 months. Wow. Um, and that's not unusual. Uh, and that's not out of me having any policy on that. I just haven't needed to, um, you know, so, it, but it, psychologically it was like, oh, wow, I'm actually going to go somewhere and meet people. Um, but, you know, Adam, I think that's a great point. And, and people are saying, you know, as we prepare to go back, they're starting to invite certain people back and we have to take the vaccine card and upload it and prove we've been vaccinated. And that's, they get first dibs to go back. Um, but everybody has said it get ready it's going to jar the system as in your system and your psyche to get back out there mm -hmm. and you know lori knows this and john knows this certainly the pace we ran at in 2019 think about how many events i mean how many times i walked from 222 mm -hmm. to the music city center to the chamber all of those you know and you've all moved so i don't even know where you are now. <laughs> <laughs> i've had that other people like our atlanta offices relocated during COVID. I mean, like, I've never been to my office. I don't even know what it looks like. They moved all my stuff while I was away. And yeah. so 
Um, but it takes a different level of energy. And we were allowed, we've started going back, we're allowed to see clients now. Um, there's some limitations, but you know, my first client lunch was, you know, a few weeks ago. I was like a bird out of my cage. I wasn't sure if my clothes would fit anymore. I, you know, if I'd walk in the door and they're like, oh, you turned into an old hag over the last year. I mean, there's just, or you'd see other people, you're like, I don't recognize them anymore. You might want to leave the yoga pants at home. You know? Exactly. exactly. And, 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 you know, in, in terms of putting on a suit or, 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 or smart clothes, I'm fine from here up. <laughs> nothing fits further down it's just like, oh well my if it makes you feel any better i actually went out one day and ended up going to meetings and dinner and the whole nine yards and then i got home and i realized that i was wearing uh two different shoes <laughs> so so you know if it makes you feel any better <laughs> It begs for a party, Lori. I, I'm seeing it now. It's the, you know, the COVID business mixer. <laughs> and you go business on the top and COVID on the bottom. Yeah, and just, I think idea. that would be a screen. I like it. No underwear idea. allowed. It must be appropriate. Yeah, I was shorts and slippers, man. And this from the waist up. Yep. This, I love like it. Shorts yeah, and slippers. Or no shoes. I like yep. it. We should do an IBC social mixer and do that. I think that'd be I fun. That'd be fun, actually. I know that would be fun. Well, guys, I think we are, uh, we have honored our commitment. And I yeah. thank you all for being part of the Nashville Business Roundtable. <laughs> uh, and uh, please let me know if there's anything I can do to help any of you guys. And, and Adam, when's your next trip to the U.S., Adam? Well, I, 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 I was really, really trying because um, I'm, I'm the only one of all of the international reps that is anywhere close to being able to yeah. travel. So um, I, I'd set my heart on coming across for GovCon um, yeah. in, in August. Um, but with the, the announcement last week, um, which has pushed all, everything back another four weeks, it's, it's not going to happen now. Yeah. Um, so um, hopefully in the fall. Um, yeah. 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 So you, you've got IDC. Um, we do we have IEDC in October? October, uh, yeah. So that could be a good time to come. Yeah, that's what I was is, let me look at the dates really quick. Um, it is. Oh, I went too fast. Um, it's October like fourth, fifth, and sixth. Okay. So you know they usually start kind of early. So depending upon what you're doing, and just. Uh, just so you know, Adam, we've got on our list, and I would love for you to do this if you could be here for it. We do a Fort Campbell. We do a lot with Fort Campbell. And so we recently went to Fort Campbell, and Lisa did not get to go, but John did. And so we, and we've got another date that we're holding and working on on uh, September 28th. So we take a group of business leaders to Fort Campbell, and they get to experience Soldier for a day. And it's really cool. And if there was any way, Wait, so you should, have, you, have you you not done it? I can't get a free pass to get out, and I didn't. Oh. I wasn't. I wasn't included on the ones pre-COVID. I think there were okay. a couple. Maybe. Here, Let me tell you, you get, to fire, you get to fire an M two four nine machine gun, and that's pretty. That's pretty cool. And then yeah. you get to uh, and and you know down right, you get to shoot. What was it like? It was over a hundred rounds or something. It was a. I mean, you're not wow. just like pop pop and okay net next. I mean, you get to really shoot some stuff, and you also wow. got to repel. That was fun. The repelling was awesome. Wow. We didn't get the helicopter flight because of the weather, but that was mm -hmm. fine with me. I'm not a helicopter person, but um, but the other stuff was cool. No, yeah. I'm all in. Uh, you know me. Yeah. I, I don't miss those kind it of things. Cool. Have any control, really so cool. Hopefully, yeah. I get a kitchen pass, but I, I know I can't do the 28th. I've got that Nashville Public Foundation thing oh, going. Yeah. But, Lisa um, is being recognized in the Public School Hall of Fame for being a Davidson County Public High School graduate. And they acknowledge and honor three, I think it's three, two or three every year. And Lisa oh, well is one of those honorees this year. So kudos. That's awesome. Uh, it's because I got the right friends in the right places. <laughs> and they're, they're, I found out I had guardian angels that are out there promoting me without my knowledge. So it's. I don't know that it's anything I did, but it's, it's a huge honor, and it, and I'm proud of my public school background and being from Nashville. So it's it's a very very cool recognition. So well, I'm, I'm a public school grad as well. So I'm I'm uh, I'm me. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. 
Oh. All right. Well, let me get back to the chores. Um, okay. Great to see everybody. Thanks, Lori. See you guys. Thank you guys. Good job, everybody. Take care. Bye. Take care. Thank you.